Welcome everybody, my name is Mr. Llama and today I am bringing you a ZVP on Core Hall Compound. This is going to be between our blue Protoss, Inji Brig T Sen, up in the top right corner, <laughs> and our red Zerg, Alex signed down in the bottom left corner. So this is going to be Alex versus Sen, and my name's Alex, and hopefully one day I'd be able to play somebody like Sen. So that is how we are going to cast this as... Maybe I could say Alex signed. I don't know about Injibrig's to Sen. So we'll see how the game works out about that one. Um, so here we go. Anyway, so it is ZVP here, and it is going to be on Core Hall Compound. So Core Hall Compound uh, does have this... Uh, easy to take FFE um, wall kind of build that you can go for as a protest player and it looks like that is exactly what Sen is going to be doing and I'm sorry that was on normal speed so we'll make that faster speed there we go so yes so it's going to be throwing down that pylon so you can just wall off with your forge your gate your uh, cybernetics core another pylon I think you do have to do use a pylon in your wall actually on this map though so that is a little vulnerable spot right there a little bit of a weak spot uh, either a pylon or a cannon I think so just just a little heads up if you're a Protoss player something that you may have to worry about is you can get Baneling busted or if there's some sort of roach push something like that they can take out that easy uh, little spot there and then move in from there so just be careful in the meantime we do have Inji Brigston or Sen gonna go ahead and scout and a 13 pool actually going down from Alex Eind. So Sen gonna go ahead and patrol his probe down here just to avoid any sort of early hatch action going. And I just was on uh, Team Liquid uh, and there was somebody asking about defending against those cheesy wallins. And sorry, um, let me go to busy really fast. There we go. Uh, but somebody was asking about defending against those cheesy like pylon, 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 and they throw cannons up and stuff. And clearly on this map it's not as big of a deal, but they could still do that where they would get cannons right here and then they come up here and build cannons and then be able to like pick off your spying pool and yada yada yada. So it's it's a little bit more on ma maps like Metalopolis and things of that sort. And here we go, Alex I'm going to go ahead and try and go for this early expansion right here at the 17 mark. And no, it looks like instead he's just going to throw down a queen and some lings. So not a bad idea to just try and bring out that drone and uh, get that expansion if the probe's not there. A little bit earlier, but the probe was there and he is going to hit that pylon block time. So going to go ahead and pull back there and sending five lings out actually to deal with that probe. I feel like you should send a couple of them out that way and then keep most of them down here to take out this pylon so that right when you have those 300 minerals that pylon is basically gone. In the meantime though here we do have a cannon coming down from Ingebrigsten. So a little bit of a risky play right there I'd say. But Alex signed having all of his lings across the map gonna go ahead and just try and go for a counterattack here and Sen does not have anything to really wall off as he did go for that Nexus first. So something you have to be extremely careful with if you are a Protoss player is if you go for that wall off or that Nexus first on a pretty open map like this. There is going to be uh, that time right there where you, you're going to have an open space. And so it looks like he did deal with that pretty well though defending against those Lings. He was able to kill off two Lings only losing two workers. So not too bad at all right there for him. But in the meantime, his gateway is not done, so he's going to have to find some way to deal with these lings. And he's just going to have to keep pulling probes, so that's extremely annoying. Going to be losing mining time. But he does have that cannon that did finish down in the base right there. So I'm extremely surprised that Sen let that uh, can finish, and it looks like he's just going right into a Roach Warren. And he's just going to be going for this sort of Leenock all-in build. Yes, he is. So it looks like he does use these larvae, though, so not going to be as efficient as possible if you are going to stay on this one base for this long. Kind of risky to, to uh, invest only half of your resources into this all-in push right here. Usually what you do is you have all those larvae right there and you have that inject. So right now you can make five roaches and as soon as that inject pops you can make five more and you can have about ten roaches. As you can see he has stayed on the gas. So not going to be quite efficient 
uh, with that, but we will have to see if that's exactly what he's going for. Yes, it does look like he is, so he's still going to be able to get out uh, seven roaches. So, still going to be a decent push, but it will come a little bit later than before. And we'll have to see if he does try and expand behind this and just take out this pylon and cannon with those roaches and then do damage. Um, as Sen does not really have much to defend at all. He has been very preoccupied with dealing with those links, which he finally does kill off. And so he just has one cannon. Okay, so he's going to throw up two cannons, three, okay, two cannons and two cannons and another pile in there to support his wall. And there you go, Alex I'm going to go ahead and just leave that cannon so he doesn't even care because it is unpowered. And it shouldn't be blocking at all. No, it's not. So he's going to go ahead and throw down that expansion and then push with those roaches. So not going to be that all-in build that I was talking about. But I'm um, going to go ahead and expand behind this, so smart play right there, and probably able to do some damage. There is a third cannon going down, though, so we will have to see. Eight roaches versus three cannons. I think the roaches will still actually win that battle, actually. We'll have to see exactly what does happen, though. But I never did get to finish, and look, it looks like he's just going to go ahead and pick off this gateway, which is very smart, and micro that yes guy back. So yes, so he will be able to get this gateway off, it looks like gonna go ahead and go in and try and get the cannons though instead but cannons really don't do too much damage there versus those roaches so Alex being very cautious with his uh, roaches right now but really I would just go ahead and take out both of these cannons as roach versus can as I said before it's extremely strong but it looks like he's just gonna push in with these roaches and the probes are going to try and get us around but probes versus roaches even worse than cannon versus roaches so here we go he's just gonna go around to the back of this base and there's no gateway up right now for Sen to deal with this, so he's not going to have anything, and it looks like his Nexus may be going down. In the meantime, though, a pylon does go up. Oh no, by Sen, so he tries to throw a pylon down to get this cannon up, but he's out of the range. I can't believe that. Oh, that's so close. There we go. He's going to throw down another pylon and another cannon, and we're going to see if Alex Hind has some sort of response to this. It does not look like he's making any units, though, right now. Instead, he's just doing a drone transfer. And that spine crawler is not going to be up in time. So he is going to have to do something, and that pylon finishes. So this cannon will have power right here. And what an amazing play by Sen there, bringing that probe down there to get that pylon. So he is going to be losing his natural expansion, unfortunately. But Alex Sand also probably going to be losing his expansion. And he's building Lings, which is something I would not recommend versus cannons. Like I said before, Roach versus cannon is always a great matchup there for the... Uh, Zerg player as roaches are extremely strong and is he going to get a wall off yes he is so it looks like uh, our Protoss player might be able to deal with this but oh no this pylon is going to go down and it looks like the roaches are going to get into the base of course a stalker can micro against roaches fairly well and he's able to pick off one of those roaches and the two more roaches are going to be doing damage but in the meantime there goes the natural of Alex and it will be finally going down However, there is a decent sized army right here that Alexine has been, built, been building up. He is about even in workers, but that army is just so vastly superior at the moment. So he's going to go down, go ahead and pick off both of these cannons, and I would hope that he makes a push right off of this, possibly expanding, of course, as well, as he does have a lot of minerals, and maybe pulling off gas or going for that Hydra tech right now as he's also pulling a lot of gas. In fact, both players are pulling a lot of gas. But we do have four cannons down, two stalkers right now, and plus one being researched for our Protoss player. So it looks like he's going to try and get some sort of uh, push going when this plus one finishes, possibly. And right now, his main goal, though, of course, is to just force field and hold off this big attack coming from our Protoss or from our Zerg player. So how many roaches does he have on the field right now? He does have 11 roaches. So 11 roach versus 4 cannon, that of course is in favor of the roaches, I would say, if they do focus fire uh, properly. But we'll have to see exactly what he does here. Looks like he's going to try and focus down this forge instead of going for any of the DPS here. And he's going to go ahead and lose a few units right off the bat. So some lings and roaches do go down, however, there's only zero force fields left for our Protoss player, but it looks like... Alex signed is just going to pull back off of that. So he says, you know what? I don't really feel like pushing in there. I'm just going to pull back. He does have his uh, natural almost up. 
but so does our protest player Sen, so we're going to have to see how exactly this game does play out. Alex Ayn does appear to be in a little bit of a lead there, as he is a little bit, a lot of a lead, I should say, as he did drone hard behind that push. 35 workers to the 23 of our protest player, and his natural is up a tad before his opponent's. In the meantime, there's going to be a sacrificial uh, stalker here that's going to try and get into the base. No, he won't be able to get in the base, but he does see that the natural is up, and he does see the unit composition there. Is still that Roachling. Um, all these drones, though, are still mining on the main base. He should get a drone transfer pretty soon. There we go. Finally, a drone transfer to make it a little bit more opti optimal there. And... He does have that lair, he does have that, and drops coming. That's what I was looking for, drops coming on that lair. So, love to see some drop play. An observer going to be pumping out here from our Protoss player. Always important in that PvZ matchup to have that observer, not only to just scout your opponent's base, because usually, I mean, he does have a spore crawler, so that's a little bit unusual, possibly thinking that there would be some sort of uh, DT coming out of that, which you do see a lot of times when Protoss players are behind, they will throw DTs. But, I mean, the Observer can just see so much of the base, and Zerg players don't just have detectors or turrets or things flying around everywhere to see everything, or any of their own Observers, really. So usually you're pretty safe in just having an Observer floating around here. You can scout all of his tech, and he can get in the base here, and there will be that uh, spore right there. So he just has to be a little bit careful. But... Um, also really good, as I was going to say, for the uh, creep tumors, of course. Because if your Zerg opponent does get that creep spread, unlike Terran, you don't have to waste scans or anything like that to see what's going on. You can simply just walk over it with your observer in a few units and snipe all those creep tumors off. Um, so very effective. So there you go. He does get in the base, and he does scout what's going on. I don't know. He does see the speed, but is he going to see all the units load up for drop? It looks like he just pulled his observer away right as the drops were being loaded. So we're going to see a Roach Hydra drop. Always one of my favorite moves. But it looks like the observer and the drops are going to be in the same sort of position over here. I'm not exactly sure of their paths. But, yeah, I think, so I think they may actually cross. This could be extremely useful for our Protoss player. And he's already gearing up for some sort of drop as he has all of his units on the high ground. There are not many units, though. This composition right here will not be able to deal with all of those roaches, roaches and hydras, even with that immortal and a couple more stalkers. So he's going to have to pump out a few more units in that army, possibly get some zealots um, to... I don't even know if that'd be good. Maybe to just tank the damage in the meantime, because sentries, well, they do have those force fields and that guardian shield, which is always good to have in that battle. Um... Their DPS is just really low, so it's just not enough damage. Do we have a plus one? Yes, we have plus one done for our uh, Zerg player. Plus two is on the way, so it's going to be plus one attack versus plus one attack. And here we go. Our Protoss player does see exactly what's up, though. He's focusing down the wrong Overlord, but he is able to snipe off. No, he does not snipe off the Overlord. That was carrying the army. So here we go. We do have a battle going down right now. Force fields going off. Not really able to do too much, though, as they don't force field out much of the army. And the Hydralisk, with so much DPS, are just going to be able to tear away, killing all of those units right there. Able to pick everything off, and the reinforcements will not be able to do enough damage, it looks like. The Immortal, though, coming out. So Immortals do huge damage versus those Roaches, and he's going to have to go ahead and try and focus that down. Yes, he is trying to focus it down, but he's not able to get that Roach and the, with the probes coming off and those couple of Stalker Warpins. He is able to successfully defend that attack. So, well done there by uh, Sen. I did not think that he had it, but he was actually able to do a decent amount of damage and just kind of micro away his uh, Immortal right there. And Alex Eind wasn't, wasn't able to do enough damage. But in the meantime, Alex Eind always doing the smart expand behind an attack tactic which I would urge all of you to pick up. So he is going to have his third up now. And it looks like he's going to run around with these roaches and possibly uh, try and do some more damage. But in the meantime, he's just going to run right into a warp prism that hopefully he did see. Yes, I would imagine he saw. And he's going to go ahead and see it with his drone as well. So I would hope he sent some units over here because he did see that warp prism. I would imagine. But in the meantime, he's just going to go over here and force a cancel on this Nexus. 
So smart play right there. But we'll have to see uh, what exactly Sen does with this warp prism. And I guess Alexine did not see it, as he's not reacting at all to uh, any units being warped in there. So some zealots going to go over here and just kind of deny this fourth. So Alexine trying to take a little bit of a sneaky fourth, and it looks like he's going to try and push in. And not many units there for Sen, but he does have that Colossus. Does he have Thermal Lance? No, not yet. So it's just being upgraded. Still over a hundred seconds on that upgrade. And it looks like Alex Hind is looking to try and transfer into Broodlord Tech as he does throw down that Spire at the same time that he throws down that Hive. So if you are a Zerg player and you are tra do trying to go for that transition, you have that Infestation Pit uh, to start, go ahead and plan for that um, mix right there between the two. of uh, Or dropping, wait until you have gas for both the Hive and Spire at the same time and then throw them both down. So here we go though, a Warp Prism comes in and it looks like Alex, all of his units are at position. And is the Snire, Spire going to get sniped? We'll have to see. Roaches are in production right there. And they're going to be taking out those Zealots over there, taking out the Evo Chamber. But they are not focusing down these Zealots on the Spire. So will he be in time to pick them off? It's going to be extremely close. A Transfuse goes off. So Clutch Transfuses right there from the Queen, able to save that smire, Spire. And there we go. Instantly morphing that into a Greater Spire. And no corruptors on the way, but he does have a big pool right now, saved up of income, uh, minerals, and gas. So as soon as that Greater Spire is close, I would imagine uh, pretty soon you'd want to start getting the corruptors out at about 50 seconds, I'd say, something like that. I'm not exactly sure of the build time on a corruptor. Can we see that here? Uh, 40 seconds. So when that spot, when that uh, Greater Spire is at 60 seconds, that's about time to get Corruptors. But I'd get them a little bit sooner as there's a push coming out right now with these two Colossus. So you will want to have those units to deal with the Colossus. And Alexine's army is all split up right now. So it looks like he may have trouble dealing with this as he did force a, or did do a little drop right there to distract all of those Roaches. They're standing and it looks like Alexine is in a bit of trouble, but he does have those Corruptors almost out right now. So if he can get those Corruptors out, he will be able to deal with those Colossus effectively. And right now, Corruptors do pop. And is he going to try and just morph them instantly? No, it does not look like he is. He's just going to go ahead and send them in to focus down those Colossus. So once those are gone, this will be a lot easier for Alexine to clean up. If he brings back his Roaches, it does not look like he's going to bring his Roaches back. So this army will not be able to effectively deal with it and all these corruptors are just going to stand up here and die freely if he wants um so please see you have more units alex and uh looks like the stalkers are just going to go right into the main base here and it looks like they're going right for that greater spire is going to morph broodlords only one broodlord is morphing and he snipes the greater spire before the broodlords can morph so even though he had a huge pool oh he was supply blocked that was the problem and so finally Alex does make some more units, but he's just trickling them in at this army. So uh, Sen is just going to slowly get a lead here off of this. And it looks like finally these roaches may be able to clean this up. Four roach versus four stalkers should be in the roaches' favor. But where are the upgrades like? 2-1. Uh, looks like Sen actually going to be able to still do a little bit of damage, clean off those roaches, and finally roaches come in and they're able to clean this up. In the meantime though, Alex does get his fourth up. So you have to commend him on a uh, great macro there with great spread. But losing that greater spire, just a blunder because he did not bring his roaches in he here front for that counterattack. And counterattacks are always a uh, huge thing that you can do when there is a Protoss ball as a Zerg player, especially if they have those Colossus and stuff like that. And they're grouped right here. If you, all of your units are over here trying to attack it, you are going to be in a lot of trouble. But if you can bring units in from that top, there is going to you are going to be able to do some damage. So Alex looks like he is going to be losing his fort though. As all of his units are in this these drop ships down here, going up to that main. So you have to love the drop play, but at the same time, he does not have enough to defend this Protoss Ball back home right now. He does have those corruptors and the one broodlord. And uh, finally some roaches popping, but We'll have to see exactly how this does play out. In the meantime, though, Alex is moving up, and there is nothing over here. Just a few stalkers. But this main army is too far out of position. It looks like he does scout those drops coming in with his observer. But will it be in time? Blink is almost done for these units. It will be done in 15 seconds. But in the meantime, Alex is going to go ahead and drop these roaches. 
but he's just focusing down in a simulator, not really getting any important tech or anything like that. Blink is finishing right now, so Blink is done. So Alex going to go ahead and burrow his units. He doesn't have tunne tunneling claws, though, and I would unburrow right now and try and snipe one of these Colossus off. That would make this worth it a little bit more, as I'm sure an Observer is on its way right now. Possibly? No, but there is a counterattack going over here at the third base. So extremely smart right there. And I would say focus down this Nexus if you can. Ah, but it looks like he's not going to. And finally moving in to try and snipe off this Nexus, but it's a little too late as the other army was able to get there. So um, a little bit of dilly-dallying over there and really not able to do anything. In the meantime, though, all these stalkers are just going to go ahead and pick off these roaches as he does have, have an observer now in the base. So Alex is going to go ahead and uh, have his army pretty split up and not in the best position right there. The observer does not come over here finally for those roaches. Is he going to? Yes, he's going to go over there and spot the rest of these roaches. So... Alex is going to lose all of these roaches right here, and if he picks it up, maybe be able to pick off a couple stalkers. Yes, there we go. So able to pick off a couple stalkers. Yeah, one stalker, and then Blink Micro does save the rest. But Alex once again ex expanding to his fourth there. Alex still does seem to have a tiny lead, but if uh, Sen can do enough damage right here with this push. That would be huge. And all of the Broodlords, though, have morphed as the Greater Spire was rebuilt. I'm not exactly sure where he did rebuild it. There we go. So at his natural, he did, did, did rebuild his fourth. And the Broodlords going to go ahead and come in and try and take out the third. But in the meantime, we do have the units from Sen pushing over here. So he did try and pull back for a second. But it looks like he's just opting for some sort of base trade instead. He is able to supply block our opponent Sen. And it looks like he's going to push up here, take out this fifth, take out this fourth, and possibly try and take out this third. That would be huge, as there is not much mining left for either player at their naturals. And so we're going to have to see exactly how this will play out right now. Alex is able to pick off that third right now, so the income of, uh, of Sen has dropped dramatically. But in the meantime, here we go, the third for Alex going to be going down as well. And he does not have anything to really deal with this. It looks like no, all of his forces are left up here. So Alex is going to pull back his Broodlords, but Broodlords do take forever. So hopefully he d he will have enough time to wait for his uh, Broodlords. Otherwise, those Roaches are just going to get disintegrated against this Stalker Corruptor army. And the upgrades are, let's see, 3-1 for both players. So here we go. The Roach is taking a lot of damage from all those Corruptors. And Sen actually going to bite and chase after these Roaches right into all of the Broodlords, it looks like. So how is he going to deal with this? He's going to have to get some sort of blink under them and pick off all of those. But in the meantime, the Roaches will be able to just sit there and snipe off all of those Stalkers. The Colossus, though, doing a lot of damage to all of those Roaches. So here we go. A lot of Stalkers do go down. And it looks like maybe going to get a free Colossus from this, but he looks like he's losing too many Roaches, and his Broodlords are going to be go going left unchecked right here. So, Broodlords versus Stalkers. It's about six Broodlords to eight or nine Stalkers, and it looks like the Broodlords are possibly going to win out. No, the Stalkers doing enough damage, as these Broodlords do not have any upgrades of any kind, and so the Stalkers able to pick off all of those Broodlords and Roach is now filing in. Uh, not going to go for any sort of attack right there to finish it off. Alex trying to retake his third, though. And uh, Sen, as well as both players' income, is abysmal. Alex at 300 income uh, or minerals per second or per minute, while Sen is at zero. So it looks like right now he is just going to have to long distance mine. But Sen does have the force over Alex, as Alex has lost almost all of his army and he does have a huge stockpile here but he has just does not have enough larva he doesn't have any macro hatch which is always something that you want to have as a zerg player for these situations uh, especially when you get into the later game and you do have 3k minerals like he did before you want to have that macro hatch so you can remake and there we go gg comes out from alex he just did not have the larva even though he had the bank sitting there to make all of the units that he needed so clutch engagement right there from Sen, able to blink forward, pick off a lot of those uh, uh, broodlords, sorry, and able to really snipe all those roaches too with his Colossus. 
So unfortunate for Alex, but well played there by Sen and able to come back despite having those roaches in his base, taken out as natural, smart play with the cannon, and really abusing the fact that his opponent did leave a cannon right there and uh, didn't bring any units out to kill it or snipe off that pylon or anything. So GG, well played, Mr. Llama out.